Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. Thank you, Lord. You are. 
Ancient of days. Ancient of days. you are God. Ancient of days. Ancient of days. You are tuned in to Kimbo Pepper Church online service under the leadership of Reverend James Gudoy Wesonga. We want to invite you to this service and to ask you that you humble yourselves and listen keenly to the word of God as, as it comes to you, even where you are tuned in in your houses. And before we begin the service, we would like to pray. But before we pray, perhaps let's ask ourselves a question like, for how long I, is this uh, lockdown or sim, half lockdown will continue even in our country in Kenya? And for how long shall the doors of the churches remain closed in our country? And we would want to say and answer this question by telling you that it will go on as long as the Lord permits. It will come to an end because the Lord knows the beginning and he, he knows the end. And what is his take? In this, my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you that until we turn to God and worship Him in truth and in spirit, this may, may have to go on for quite a while. The economies are suffering, but the Lord is not silent about this. He knows what is happening, He knows when it will come to an end, and it is upon us to focus unto Him, to go back to Him and worship Him the way He intends us to worship Him. Because if we are just praying and asking for him to bring this to an end so that we can go on with our ways, the way we've been living, perhaps worshiping the gods, the, the trusting in other things, trusting in wealth, then this may have to go on for quite a longer period. But that is not the wish of God because in his word, all the promises are for good and not for bad, especially for them who seek him in truth and in spirit. So... Let us turn to him and not harden our hearts. Let us not play, play tricks with the instructions from the government because there are instructions for good and not for bad. And if we can ad adhere to the instructions and if we can not obey instructions of them that we can see, then it shows how hard it is for us to, to hearken to the instructions of God whom we cannot see. Brothers and sisters, let us turn to God in truth and in spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you this morning, glorifying your name and exalting you for whom you are to us. We acknowledge you as God in all circumstances. You are God when we are in the valley. You are God when, you are God when we are climbing uphill. You are God when the economy is suffering. You are God when there is no food on the table. You are God when everything is locked up. You are God when people are suffering from corona. You are God when everybody is healthy. You are God of all circumstances. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Your Lord, God Almighty, who reigns on high. 
and who has good purposes and plans for all of us. That is why we humble ourselves before you this morning, acknowledging your goodness and your mercies and grace upon us. Thank you for sustaining those of us that are still well under your protection even during this pandemic. Oh Lord, we remember those that are sick already. We remember the families that are affected. We remember the economies that are affected, dear Father. We know that this is not your plan, Heavenly Master. And we humble before you this morning, praying for your forgiveness, dear Lord. This might have happened, Father, because of our forgetfulness, because of our sinful nature. But Father, you are a God of forgiveness. Every morning your mercies are new and they are renewed, oh Father. May you look upon the blood of Jesus that covered our sins and reunited us with you, oh Heavenly Father. Do not look upon our iniquities, because if you were to look at it, oh Father, only what we deserve is death. But Lord, you are for forgiving God. May you forgive us this morning. We encourage, we, we encourage ourselves in you, and we hope in you, dear Father. May you restore such like hope, that Lord, when we call upon your name, Father, your, name prom your word promises that you'll hear our prayers, that you will forgive our sins, that you will heal our land, that you will restore our health. Oh, dear Father, may you forgive us at this point. Remember our government, remember our nation, remember the world at large. Many are sick, many are dying, but Lord, that is not your plan. May the devil be defeated, for Father, you defeated him right from the beginning, and even today he is defeated. We, co we trust in you, oh Father, and we hope in you, in you, dear Lord. May you bring this to an end, oh Father, but after we have learned the lesson, I can open our hearts, oh Lord. We humble ourselves before you, that Father, we may learn the lesson that you want us to learn from this, oh Father, early enough, that Father, we may be restored. May you help us, oh Father, that your doors of the doors of your churches, Lord, may be opened to us once again, that your people may hear your word, that your people may come back unto you, that your people may be restored unto you, that Lord, your goodness may be restored. We call upon your name this morning, that Father, you may minister unto us, even in this service, oh Lord. Whoever is listening and whoever is watching, oh Lord, may learn something, dear Father, that they may be encouraged in you, that Lord, you are reigning, even in all circumstances. We hope in you, we submit up in your will, and Lord, we pray that you begin with us this service and go, go, go through, with, through it with us, O oh Lord. And when it ends, glory and honor shall return unto your holy name, for it is all due to you, O oh Lord. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We welcome you once again, and even as the worship will be going on, even the praises as they will be going on, even as our pastor will be ministering unto you, may you learn something that we may walk through this together, and may God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to sing the hymn song, It's So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Trust in Jesus and to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise and to know this is the sing to Jesus, 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 how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust in more. And oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to trust his cleansing blood. And in simple faith to pledge me, neither healing cleansing. Sing to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. And 
yes, it's we to trust in Jesus. Just from sin and self to sin, just from Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. And I'm so glad I've learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, 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 how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, 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 precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. And I'm so glad I've learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. We sing Jesus, 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 friend, I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, 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 precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. Jesus, 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 how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, 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 precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Amen. There is no one like you, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. We praise you this morning as we declare that there is no one like you. There has never been like you. There will never be like you. Amen. Put your hands together unto Jesus. Jehovah, 
Jehová Alfa Jehovah, 
you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Anything you are good, your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. And that's why we say, Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high God. We say Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, we lift your name, Jehovah. We say Jehovah, most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. So, Lord, Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high. You are the most high. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We glorify your holy name. There's nobody else like you this morning. That's why we honor you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, you are welcome here, Lord. You are welcome, Lord.
As we come to share your word, Holy Spirit, take over this service now. Whatever they are hearing in their homes, wherever they are, let the Spirit of God speak to them. Open our ears to your word and let your word have room in our hearts. I pray that this will be a turning point to many of us as we focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful that I have a chance to say a word with you. I begin with the church members of Kimbo Pepper Church. Yes, I'll be honest, I miss you dearly, especially on a Sunday like this. But I know nothing is without purpose. And at the end of this, we shall see the might hand of God in our midst. I was taking time wondering what will I share with the people of God in such a dark moment. And as it has been said, 21 days have been increased again. That we will remain in our homes and do things as we have been doing. That means not even coming to raise up our hands together. I knew exactly this is the attack of the enemy. The Lord gave me a message to bring to whoever is hearing me. Whether you are a member of Kimbo Pepper Church, or you are not in Kenya, you are in another place, but hearing me today, I have a word from the Lord. And my message this morning, the topic is hidden power of prayer and fasting. Church, there is power in prayer and fasting. And we are just calling prayer all over, but people are not understanding it very well. It has become like a normal thing to do because we are in the church. A normal thing to do because we are in the home. But I want us to change the gears of prayer today 
and look at it in a very, very serious way. You know, you can't have a testimony without a test. Even now I was hearing people saying, what will happen to the kids who are to do the Kenya Certificate of Education, the primary education and the high school? That's class 8 and from 4s. You know what? When they do that exam and when they pass it, the class 8 will be going to high school next year. The from 4s will be going to universities and colleges. They can never come back to high school. And that's how I found it that God is allowing this to happen now. Brothers and sisters, when we overcome this challenge, we are going on another level. There is no turning back after we conquer this. But how are we going to overcome? There is hidden power of prayer and fasting. That's combining prayer and fasting. You know what? Somebody told me one day, no testimony without a test. So we can't give testimonies with no test. So hidden power of prayer and fasting is my message this morning wherever you are. God has provided a way to turn a certain defeat into awesome victory and demonic strongholds into highways of his love and power. I repeat that word again. God has provided a way to turn a certain defeat into awesome victory and uh, demonic strongholds into highways of his love and power. When overwhelming defeat looks you in the face, whether the attack is physical or family or financial crisis. When this is the attack, it's looking in our face. Whether it is physical or family or financial crisis, the hidden power of prayer and fasting holds the key that will unlock the resident's power of the Holy Spirit within you. Many of us, Bible says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The power of God is within us. And I want you to know now that we take a step. The hidden power of prayer and fasting, it holds the key that will unlock the resident power of the Holy Spirit within you. And this is my main part to share with you. Open with me the book of Ezra. Ezra, the book of Ezra, chapter 2, Ezra chapter 8. The book of Ezra chapter 8, and I'm going to read verse 21, 23. If you recall, this was a time when it was a plan to destroy all the children of Israel. And people had gathered, and it was so powerfully planned, and Mordecai had it. And he sent a message to Esther and told her that she should stand in this gap. But look at chapter 8, verse 21 to 23, how Esther answered back. Verse 21, Esther chapter 8, verses 21 to 23. The book of Ezra, not Esther. Ezra chapter 8, verses 21 to 23. My Bible says, Then, this is the man of God proclaiming. I'm sure I've mixed it up. Then I proclaimed the fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and the horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Because we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him. But his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for this and he answered our prayer. I'm sorry, this is not Esther. This is a man of God speaking to us. Israelites are facing a tough time and they are moving on to Jerusalem. But they have us locked up and everything is very tough says, then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. If I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers 
and the horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Because we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him. But his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for this. And he answered our prayers. Church, the hidden power and trusting. This man of God, he got scared. As the enemy was there, they are going to Jerusalem. They have nowhere to move. The enemy is there. But he calls at this time all the people to fast and pray. Because he got afraid. He had already told the people how God is powerful. We have been preaching for years since I became a pastor. I've been preaching of the power of God. The healing power. The redeeming power. The protection power. The power of provision. Church, this man gets me well. He says he feared to ask the king to give them soldiers. Because they had told him how God will protect those who seek him and take him. So he called for the fast. And you know what? That's what I'm saying. The hidden power of prayer and fasting. And God answered them. And they moved on to their destiny. As you do fasting to your prayers, as you add fasting to your prayers, you will experience an explosive power in your life. When you put fasting into prayer, we leave food aside. We leave all luxuries aside. Take time with this God. At the end of this message of mine, you will understand how to turn adversity into advantage. Whatever the enemy has planned, you are more than a conqueror. You will get ahead without competing. Without competing with anybody, you will go ahead. You will see your desire fulfilled. I know you had plans for this year. My plan was the year of great harvest. Planning to win souls to the Lord like never before. But look at how everything is shattered down. Like it will never work again. But there is power in prayer and fasting. Obtain the wealth available for you. Whatever the Lord has planned for you, you will get it. Use power of prayer and fasting. You will find peace in lifeful storms. As the storm is all over, you turn on the TV. The news saying, wash your hands. Don't get out, stay in the house. Some of us, we have stopped from work. There's no business. You can now go out of Nairobi Metropolitan. Some of you, your family is out there and you are here. You are blocked out. But you are going to find peace in life to storm. And you will be free from sin. If you hear what I'm speaking about, about the hidden power of prayer and fasting. Honestly, this man of God, when he called, he proclaimed a fast at the river of Ahababa. That we might humble ourselves before God. This is what I want to talk about, church. Time to humble ourselves and seek this God. Come back to our position as men and women of God. Something is about to happen. And it will come now. Okay? Hidden power of prayer and fasting. My number one. We fast to humble ourselves before God. And to obtain his grace and power. Why do we fast? We fast to humble ourselves before God and obtain his grace and power. When you fast, you humble yourself. When your stomach is full and everything, you are proud, you can't humble. But when you leave food and something comes, you find yourself happening. Look in Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 17, what the word of God says. I'm going to use much the word of God. Second Chronicles, I know this verse is very well known, but let us read it again. Chapter 7 and verse 14. The Bible says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Why am I insisting on prayer and fasting? Look at now the men who deal with the medicine all over the world, seeking for the way to get the medicine to kill this disease. Even wanting to do it right there. Look at the 
officers of the police, they are all over, even the military. The government is awake, doing whatever they are supposed to do. Church, let us wake up. There is power in prayer and fasting. And I want to proclaim three days, I'm going to put them clear, that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we are going to go before God and seek this God. Members of Kibo Pefa Church, and whoever is hearing me, we are about to see the hand of God in our midst. Second, if we humble ourselves and seek the Lord, God will hear us. Look at what he says in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 4. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 34. What the word of God says. Proverbs, surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. If you humble yourself, the grace of God will just overshadow you, will come over you. What we need here is now the power of God to come out completely. I'm tired of preaching to empty chairs, seeing empty chairs. I know you're in your house, I'm preaching to you. But it is different when we are together. When we lift up our hands and worship the name of the Lord together, it's different. The enemy is not carnival. Uh, carnivorous as you say the enemy is the devil and this is the time now to attack the real enemy church we need to rise look at psalms chapter 35 what king david said or wrote about in the book of psalms chapter 35 verse 13 psalms 35 verse 13 i was really meditating Wondering what should we do? Church, it is time to take our position. Proverbs 35 and verse 13. This is what the Bible says. It's what King David said. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing were sackcloth. I humbled myself with the fasting, and my prayer would return to my own heart. Tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Let's put food aside. Let's go to this God. Let's humble ourselves now. God will hear. God will answer. This disease can be stopped by the hand of God. If he dried the Red Sea and the children of Israel crossed on the dry ground, if he stopped the river Jordan and they crossed on dry ground, if brought down the walls of Jericho, I want to tell you tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, whoever is hearing me, Join me as we help ourselves when we live drinking and eating and doing everything and just focus on this God. It's going to take us to another level. Look at how Jesus humbled himself in the book of Philippians. You know, we look at him as our Savior and he did. But look what the book of Philippians says about Jesus. So it's not just that we are doing things, but the best example in our lives is the Lord Jesus himself. In Philippians, Chapter 2, beginning from verse 5, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bold servant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Verse 9, Therefore, God also has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. He humbled himself, he came, he was born in a manger, yet he was God. He was the son of God. He was in the, th God is threefold. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But he humbled himself, born in a manger. Look at how he was crucified. We looked at Easter a few weeks ago now. Hanged on the cross like the worst criminal in the world. But he rose from the dead. God, Jesus humbled himself. God does what he says. And it is time now, church, that we become serious. We first to humble ourselves before God. 
and to obtain his grace and power. And when he died and rose again, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue can confess. When we stop, let's even not talk things like the way they are talking. But let us go by the word of God. Let us take time with this God. Humbling ourselves is making the body look like things are not working. But in the spirit, we are seeking to come stronger. When you eat food, you strengthen your body. You strengthen your physical life. Yeah. But let's quench the body. Strengthen the spirit in the next three days. I believe God will hear our power. Number two, why do we fast and pray? We fast when seeking God's direction. We need to seek the direction of God in this place. Just as we read in the book of Ezra, he declared a fast. Why? Because he had said, God, they told the king, God is with them and he takes care of them. So he couldn't ask the soldiers because they had not told him. But when he called for fast and prayer, the Lord heard and he led them to where they were to go. We fast when seeking God's direction. And that's why I'd mistaken by beginning with the book of Esther. Now look at Esther chapter 4. When Mordecai told, took people to go and tell Esther how things are now getting tough and that Esther must do something. Look at Esther chapter 4 verses 15 to 16. When they told Esther she feared, she wondered how will she go to the king? The rules were so many. How shall we overcome this disease? When even doctors don't have the medicine, they are still seeking it. Church, how long will the doors of the church be closed? It's not about a human being to decide. But you and I, if we humble ourselves and seek the direction, look at Esther chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. If you begin in chapter 5, you will see after the prayer and fasting, Esther appeared before the king. And the glory of God shined over her. And everything, the Israelites were free. This is about the kingdom of God. This is about the church. We can't just keep telling the government what to do. But let us go in prayer and fasting. The three days. Don't eat or drink tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I believe my God will answer. There is a way out of your problem right now that you are facing. There is a light in the tunnel. There is a lily in the valley. I don't care how dark is looking in your life and everything shattered down. There is divine, a divine provision from above. But you know what? It's not by might, not by power. It's by the Spirit of God. And when we stop feeding the physical body, the spiritual man is going to come up. The spiritual person is going to come up. You are going to see what God can do using whoever is ready to do it. Hear me, members of Kimbo Pepha Church. Hear me as your pastor, as a servant of God. Hear me whether you are in a medical where you are online. Let us take the time out now. If the government is doing their best, it is now time for the church to come. Yes, we can go to many other places to appeal for the church to be opened. But I want to tell you, he is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. And when he opens the doors, nobody will shut. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He is seated on the right hand of the father. He can hear our cry. But let us come. Esther told them, go and tell Mordecai. Let them not eat or drink for three days. I will do the same. And after that, I'll go in and get it. Let's take prayer and fasting. The 21 days declared again can be shortened by God. Corona can disappear in the land of Kenya and all over the world. Our God is a mighty God. 
Oh my God. We fast when seeking God's direction. What will you do with your children? What will you do with your family? What will you do with your, with your business? What will you do without a job now? Some of you struggling seriously. Let us go before God. He'll give us a direction. And number three, we fast to overcome temptations in areas that keep us from moving into God's power. That's how the enemy has destroyed the church. Church has become something different. In the days of our great grandfathers, some things never happen in the church like they're happening. No wonder the doors are closed. <laughs> but I want to tell you that we can overcome every temptation and every area that you have failed. As you take these three days, dedicate yourself to the Lord. There is no sin you have committed where power in the blood of the Lamb cannot remove it. There is no mistake you made that the mercies of God cannot remove. There is still power in the blood of the Lamb. Looking at the cross, you will be set free today. These three days, humble yourself. Seek the Lord. Get away from what you have done wrong. Stand. Stand firm in the word of God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I wish I could do better than this. But may the spirit of God speak to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So though we are in the flesh, but we do not walk in the flesh. We do not walk according to the flesh. The weapons of warfare are not carnal, but might in God for pulling down strongholds. These three days, can we enter into that presence of God? Though we are still in the body, though we also enter matatus like others, though we are singing the same song, but I tell you, what is in us is greater than who is outside there. The power of God within us. And when we take time to fast and seek God, oh, people are going to see the hand of God. People are going to see the church is not like the shops. People are going to see the church is not like other hospitals. I was reading last night, and Jesus was in the house of God, and they brought a man who was lame. He couldn't walk. They came and they could not enter. They went up and removed the iron sheets up there. Lowered him into the presence of God. The altar of God is the church. This is a place where even people can come with corona and be healed. But the challenge is that we as believers, we have not put on the garment that God has given us. Hidden power is within us. It's not functioning for people to see and understand. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. As the apostle Paul is in prison. What did he say? 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 6 to 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. We are in a battlefield. This is a fight. The man has done no sin. He's in prison. But he says, I fought the good fight. This is a spiritual fight. But many of us think that once you are born again, now everything is okay. Everything is going smooth. Oh, you'll be eating meat and everything, chicken every day. You'll drive Prados every day. You'll be the one to sit on the higher ground every day. Challenges will not come to you. If they come, you're a slider. No. Brothers and sisters, Paul is in prison. He never committed adultery. 
He never killed anybody. It was because of the gospel. This attack is not a way to the world, but it's just attacking the presence of God in where we are. And it's time to fight a fight. Fight now. I know you don't have food, baby. Maybe you're not feeling well. Maybe you don't sell to get the money. But fight, don't give up. Fight, you'll overcome. Fight, have a feeling it is going to be all right tomorrow. Fight it now in prayer and fasting. We go before God and make sure that his power comes again. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. As I said, I have many verses because I want it to match. So, you know, I'm not just going for prayer and fasting, but it will match. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Do you, not, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, no extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Church, we can't continue in the weaknesses of life. Even now in the church, things, everything is there. Sexual morality is so much. Adultery is so much. Lying is so much. Stealing is so much. All these things, people not in hell, the kingdom of God. This storm, may you remove this garment and throw it away by the power of the blood of the Lamb. As you fast these three days, ask God to remember you, to clean you again, to give you another heart, to take you to another level, to stand as a child of God. Despite of all the attacks, of all the plans of the enemy, we are more than conquerors. Jealousy people, quarreling, stealing, even stealing the church, lying and everything. No wonder the churches are closed. But let these three days, if you hear me, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday, let us get closer to the cross of Jesus. I said it before. There is still power in the blood of the Lamb. Some of us were like that. But we were forgiven. We were washed. That's how we walked in the house of God. That's why some of us are standing at pastors. But the enemy has been attacking. And a lot of failures have come in the church. A lot of lying. A lot of hypocrisy. But now, let's get back to the real foundation. To believe that we are sons and daughters of God. The world is waiting for the manifestation of sons and daughters of God. And during this period, this is the time to stand up and be counted in the family of God. So when we fast, we fast to overcome temptations in areas that keep us from moving into the power of God. Let's fight this fight now. What is your weakness? Where did you fall short? Where did you turn back? Years in the house of God. We have preached many messages. Millions have come even to the Lord. Healing was taking place. But how am I walking with this God? Is my name in that book of life? And I want to finish by giving an example of a man of God. In the book of Genesis chapter 32. Look at this man. Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. We will begin from verse 22 to 28. But before, let me say, Jacob, with the help of his mother, he lied to his father and he stole the blessing of his brother. But when he, the brother knew wanted to kill him, he went to a foreign land. Still there, God blessed him. On his way back now to meet his brother. So look at 32, what happened with this man. Chapter 22, verse 22 to 28. Genesis 32, 22 to 28. And he arose that night 
and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and the man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. These three days, this man sent away his wife, his children, everything. Shut some things out tomorrow. Shut some things out on Tuesday. Shut some doors out on Wednesday. This is time. If, David, if Paul is in prison... And he said, he tells his son, I fought a good fight. Kept the faith and finished the race. What the enemy is after is your faith in God. There is such a power. When the Holy Ghost came upon them, nothing could stand before. Nothing can stand before the church. We can overpower. As the education people are going, the doctors are looking for the medicine to treat coronavirus. Church, let us seek the Lord. To look for a medicine to overcome not only this disease, but all the challenges of the devil. And Jacob wrestled with this person. When it was about morning, he told him, let me go. Jacob said, I'm not letting you go unless you bless me. What did he ask him? What is your name, Jacob? You know what Jacob means? It means a deceiver. And he said, from today, you'll be called Israel. Oh my God. May God change my name in these three days. May God change your name in these three days. May your history turn around in these three days. May God change whatever is being planned by the enemy in these three days. May the presence of God overshadow your home. But as I said for the three days, as Esther told them, tell Mordecai, let them not eat or drink for three days. And then I'll go to the king against the law of the land. Brothers and sisters, hearing me, let us join together. Even if we shall be only 10, 20, 30, 100, God will hear our cry. God will hear and answer our cry. Jacob wrestled with God. His power was when he said, I won't let you go until you bless me. What he meant was, I won't be a deceiver again. He was turning around. And what did the man of God tell him? Your name will no longer be called Jacob. If I hear sometimes on the news, people are saying churches are there because of correcting man and tithing. But church, brothers and sisters, tithing is not a command from anybody. It's the command in the word of God. Bring your tithe in the storehouse of God. Test and say, and many church people are not bringing their tithe. We have not been faithful in tithing. And this is holding the financial blessing. People can declare things to you. They become temporary. But bring your tithe in the storehouse of God. Let people say what they say. Let them do what they do. But this is what the word of God. And when you obey the word of God. As you go in this prayer. Call sin, sin. Where you have failed, tell God to remember you. Don't go by the words of the people. You know where you went wrong. I know where I failed. People don't need to tell me. God knows and the devil knows. Three people know. The devil knows, God knows, and you know. These three days, time to wrestle with God. Not physically, it is spiritual wrestling. Let's put God away. Let some things be closed out. Can you imagine now? You can't go out of Nairobi Metropolitan. Let us now take time. Those in Mombasa, you can't get out of Mombasa County. You can't get out of another county. It's even hard to get out of Kenya into another state. Let us now wrestle with God. Let's take time. Dedicate ourselves to God. Tell God to forgive us. Tell God to remember His grace. Tell God to change our direction and our ways. 
May God hear your cry this week. May God answer your prayer these three days. Oh, may the glory of God shine over you. May the church be restored again. May we see the hand of God. God hears our cry. God answers our prayer. But I repeat so that you remember I said the hidden prayer, the hidden power of prayer and fasting. It will turn adversity into advantage. It will see your desires fulfilled. You will find the peace in the way of in the midst of the storm and you will be free from sin. We fast to ourselves before God and obtain his grace and power. When we leave everything because of the Lord, he'll answer our prayer. We fast when seeking God's direction. Where are we going? God will show us how to go. We fast to overcome temptations in areas that have kept us from moving into God's power. Because as I repeat again, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. This is the moment now. And I call upon the worship team to join me as we close now. Very, very important. I don't have any more word to speak to you. But I'm encouraging you. And what we shall do tomorrow, we shall be online. I'll give a message again 8 to 9 p.m. As we close the day of prayer. Then Tuesday again 8 to 9 p.m. On Wednesday again 8 to 9 p.m. And I believe after that, it will be in the hands of the creator. God will do it. Church, let's not go many ways of looking how the church can be opened. Or how I can come out of this bondage. Of how my job can come back. Of how my business can be revived again. Of how I can go and see my parents again. Let's go before God. He makes a way where there is no way. And as we go in this song, because I may forget... For you who are giving your tithe, our pay bill number is 7120119. And the account number is Pefra Kimbo Church. If you are sending by M-Pesa, the phone number is 0710210400. I wave a little you have gotten. Don't eat your tithe. And somebody told me, and I'll never forget when I was still a young man, when you bring your tithe, even if your pastor will not pray, God will see your deeds and he'll commit it. If you're in your house, could you stand up with me as we go in this song now?
heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Lord, I honor you. We dedicate ourselves now before you. You make a way where there is no way. You are God of all the promises. Let's not continue in this bondage. Let's not continue in this storm of life. Oh Lord, I pray. Hear the cry of your people. Forgive us where we went wrong. We humble ourselves before you. We are sorry for what we have thought and turning the church to be. But we are coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you, Jesus. May the angel of God come around every brother and sister who is hearing me. May we wrestle in the spiritual world like Jacob wrestled with that man. May our names change during these three days. And I pray by next Sunday there will be an answer to some of our cries. I dedicate it to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, brother, sister. And as I said, remember, tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be online, 8 to 9 p.m. every night, sharing with you how to go about this time of prayer and fasting. Let's take it seriously. Yes, the news will come, may be tougher, but let us focus on this God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus.